Today we're going to be working on the last video from the series on building out a silk aquatint plate. So for this video we're going to be printing. Uh, so to start out your printing you want to go ahead and grab all of the supplies you're going to need. Um, I laid down some white paper on my table to protect it. But go ahead and grab your ink. Um, I'm using Gamblin Portland Black etching ink, your palette knife, Tear down your paper. Um, I'd like to mention that the Japanese paper that I'm using in this did not work out well for me, so I think you should get something that's like a heavier weight paper. Honestly, sketchbook paper prints really well, um, but whatever paper you're using, I find that um, you need something, a paper that can take a little bit of abuse, so uh, keep that in mind. I think domestic etching paper also prints really well for this process if you have that on hand. Um, and just kind of get everything you need together. Um, I have a uh, old shirt that I'm going to cut up for this process to make my rags. I don't actually have a tarlatan, which is your ideal wiping material. Um, so I'm just going to be using this piece of shirt. Works surprisingly well. So now I'm going to spread the ink out and mix the ink to the right consistency for this video. Um, so I'm starting out with just your basic ink and I'm using the back of this Pyrex dish as my um, glass slab. I don't have a glass slab in my house. Um, honestly, it's not recommended that you use um, kitchen items for your printmaking processes. Um, I'm very careful to use the bottom of my Pyrex dish and I'm also very careful to clean it entirely when I'm finished. But this is just giving me a little surface to mix ink on and I'm mixing a little bit of vegetable oil in with the ink. So um, just a note, this is not enough vegetable oil. So um, it turns out you need a good bit more. This ink, um, it took me a couple tries to get this to work out um, and this was definitely not enough looseness in my ink. Now, if you have access to a full print shop full of supplies, you might be better off with something like a Miracle Gel or a gel reducer. Um, I'm just kind of like at home making the stuff, so this is what I had on hand. Um, and it does actually loosen the ink up fairly well. I can't speak for the archivability of using kitchen oils in your artwork, so just keep that in mind um, as I build this out. to warm your ink up before you spread it out on the plate. So here I'm just going to kind of work that ink back and forth and mix the oils in throughout. This also catches any like dried ink. You can pick out dried ink and you won't have to deal with that clogging your, uh, your print here. So kind of try and mix it out as thoroughly as you can. And then once the ink is feeling fairly smooth, you're ready to card it onto the plate. Now, um, Normally, I would never card ink on with a palette knife, ever. I just want to be clear. Um, because the metal, when you normally you print um, etching inks, you're using with a metal plate. And if I was to use the um, my palette knife on the metal plate, it would cause terrible scratches. But I'm not really worried about this with my cardboard and fabric plate. And I feel like I'm getting a little bit more uh, durability out of my palette knife this way. But you could absolutely card on your ink using um, a cardboard, mat board chip that you cut down. Um, you could use a credit card, um, ideally one that you don't love anymore. You know, maybe your uh, Safeway card or whatever you have, your Metro card. Um, and so now that it's carded on, I'm trying to get all of it, all the way to its edges, and sort of smear the ink into the texture of the mesh, right? And then... Um, after I've got it sort of thoroughly onto the plate, I want to actually scrape it off. And I'm going to be pretty aggressive here with the scrape down because um, the, this car, the plate is really thirsty and tends to hold a lot of ink. So um, I still would like to leave a little bit more ink on the plate than I would if I was printing the same plate on a press, right? So if I had a press at hand, I would... Um, I would wipe this with a little bit less play tone, but because I'm hand printing and I'm going to get a lot less pressure, um, I'm just going to need to leave a little bit more, actually a good bit more ink on the plate to get enough of that to transfer. So I'm still scraping down my plate. Um, once I 
finish scraping off as much ink as I can. Um, you want to make sure that the, the scrape down is fairly even, but um, there's still going to be, uh, this is just part one of the wiping, right? So um, I find that if you can get more of the ink scraped off, you'll spend less time with the tarlatan and be less likely to overwipe your plate. Um, I don't have a tarlatan with me today, so I'm just using this uh, t-shirt that I've ripped up, and honestly, it's working okay. So um, tarlatan, if you're familiar with what we have in the print shop, is basically this starch cheesecloth that's really good at removing ink and kind of manipulating it. Um, I would say with this particular plate, you can be a little bit more aggressive with it than you normally would with an etching plate. You can really kind of like sort of aggressively push that ink around. It doesn't really need the delicate handling um, because this is so tonal and it's holding so much ink. But just kind of like wipe it until it, it looks like what you think it should look like and check to see if there's any like big goobers or thick spots. You want to sort of even sheen across the whole plate. Next up, dampen your paper. So I'm using sketchbook paper in this print. Um, I'm You can use a mister, like I have a little water mister bottle here to dampen the paper. What I like to do is I like to mist one side and then flip it over and mist the other side. Um, it's actually a really good idea to let the water spread in the paper fibers um, to give yourself more even distribution of paper. So if you're planning on printing an addition, what sometimes people will do is they'll kind of dampen a paper and then dampen the next sheet and make a stack. That's called a damp pack. Um, so here you can see I've actually switched out because I found out the Japanese paper didn't work out very well. So this is a piece of damp sketchbook paper. Um, and it printed a lot better than my Japanese paper. I think the Kozo fibers kind of tore up a little bit in the printing process. So, um, c'est la vie. I love Japanese paper, but it's just not the right tool for every job. <laughs> so, um, right now I'm tearing down a little bit of wax paper. And I'm going to use that as a sort of um, a layer of interleaving between my uh, tool and my paper. And I tried this little bottle here. And it just did not work out. It kind of it kind of grabbed and dragged a little bit too much. You can see that it's kind of distorting the paper on the surface. So setting the bottle aside, I think if I had a different a different bottle that was a little less grabby, it might work. Um, but right now, I'm actually just going straight in with the spoon. Um, so this is a little bit labor intensive. You're going to need to use some physical force. You know, kind of bear down on the spoon and work at it. Um, it might be a good strategy to kind of, um, either you might thoroughly rub one corner and like work your way across. I am trying to get a feel for it, so I'm kind of all over the place, but um, it does take a good bit of pressure and it does take a bit of patience, right? So just keep working it. Um, I'm a big fan of the peek at your artwork as you go school of art here, so you can get a best, the best sense of how the transfer is going by peeling up those corners and peeking underneath it to see if you've missed a spot or so have you. And here we go, this is, this, this is taking me a while. Um, but do notice how the paper is showing crinkles at the edges? That's because it's taking me long enough that my dampened paper is starting to dry. It always dries at the edges first. So you want to be really conscientious that you um, don't sit and eat lunch and then come back to make your print, right? You need to actually have that damp paper ready to go. There's like a, there's like a sweet spot of damp, but not overly damp. But just uh, rub it in there. Um, try not to uh, shift the paper while you're doing the rubbing. So um, it's really important that you don't kind of scratch at the fibers, but also that the paper doesn't shift or else that might give you a little bit of a, a double impression where you in fact want a single impression. Um, so I'm just going to keep going away at this plate. It does take a while. Um, it takes a lot of pretty firm pressure to build it up, but you do want to continue to work quickly um, as it goes. Try not to uh, shift the paper as you rub the spoon on the back. It will cause you to get a double impression where you really want a single impression. And then just keep peeking underneath it pretty to see how it's, how it's going. I'm getting pretty close here. You can say I'm kind of excited. I keep, keep checking it out. Um, other thing I want to mention is that for this particular print, I'm going to, I don't have a drying rack, so I'm going to dry it exposed to the air, let the ink dry that way, and then I will flatten it later, um, because I don't have a, a proper drying rack. But that looks pretty good. 
yeah, I got a lot of tone. Looks like my plate. I might want to make some changes to the plate now, but that is now an additional aqua tinted silk aqua tint. Looking good. So last up before you finished cleanup, and people regularly ask me about how to clean up in the print shop uh, or when they're printing at home. And the key here is, uh, first of all, you wanna scrape up as much ink as you possibly can. The less ink you have left, the less ink you have to clean up, right? So without using any like solvents or anything like that, you could just solve a lot of your problem, just, just scrape up as thin a layer as possible. So give me a second here, scrape all that up. Um, and next up, I'm actually just gonna clean up using vegetable oil. So this ink has a lot of vegetable oil already mixed in with it, which makes it a lot easier to scrape up than it normally would. Um, and I'm trying not to make a huge mess in my home. So instead of uh, just squirting vegetable oil all over the place, I'm actually pouring it into my um, pouring it into my hand and then it's like rubbing it into my um, rag, right? And then I can use that. So otherwise, you can sometimes people will pour ink directly on the plate, but because this plate may not be entirely sealed and can be really absorbent, I don't want to saturate the plate with oil and make like a super oily plate. I just want a little bit of oil in my rag and then I can buff it down. Um, I always like, there's a sequence here, I always like to wipe down my plate first when my rag is cleaner, and then I'll follow up and wipe down my slab and tools. Um, I just, I care, I'm a little bit more worried about ink clogging up the textures of my plate than I am about cleaning out my glass slab. I know pretty well that I can get the glass slab clean, so I'm not super worried about it. Um, again, it's not a recommended that you use kitchen glass for this, but it seemed to work out okay. Um, after this, I follow up with a bit of kitchen degreaser. So um, just like a regular squeezy spray bottle to finish up the, the cleanup. Um, so there was a little bit of like ink residue after the sort of oil wipe down, but it was very, very little. And um, it just took one more pass with the spray cleaner. And then you can fold up your workspace and then you're clean, done. Thank you.